So I'm Harry Halpin. I'm presenting the philosophical and technical legacy of Bernard Stiegler. I'm a researcher at the Center Leo Postel as part of the Free University of Brussels and also the CEO of NIM Technologies. Now, this is a very personal and, and tragic presentation because Bernard was my postdoctoral advisor at Saint Pompidou, but he also passed away uh, last year in August. And what we hope to get from this presentation is to really understand the philosophical repercussions of his thought in terms of human computer interaction, design, and the future of the digital itself. Now, what does philosophy have to do with computing and AI has quite a lot. And while there's been a lot of talk of embeddedness and embodiment, and somehow Heidegger is viewed as a, a revolutionary thinker, I think it's good to remember that a lot of this thought has already been absorbed uh, by Google. And as evidence, I present Hubert Dreyfus, who introduced at least the first division of being in time uh, into computer science with his critique of uh, AI entitled What Computers Still Can't Do, a Critique of Artificial Reason. Um, and this work was followed up by Terry Winograd, who's standing next to him, who with his co-author, Fernando Flores, wrote a wonderful book called Understanding Computers and Cognition, New Foundation for Design. And this explicitly took Heideggerian thought and applied it to technology, concepts like ready to hand, Zuhand and Height, being almost interacting with computers so much that it appears almost invisible. Uh, however, these insights have been absorbed into Google and the Googleplex. And can we find another way out? Um, I think we can. Stiegler's philosophy points towards a way out. And he starts at a similar place to my PhD advisor, Andy Clark, with his extended mind thesis. So uh, Bernard uses very difficult to understand vocabulary. I'm just gonna give a quick overview of it. So Bernard believes that the, our very memories are now externalized outside of our mind, a process he calls exomatization. And he builds on Husserl. And he says, well, you know, when you see something, your initial phenomenon as a phenomenology is the primary retention. And then your memory of it, which is different from what you've seen, uh, your memory of reading a book is different from the, the experience you had as the book is read, is your secondary retention. And the ternary retention is your notes, perhaps on paper, perhaps uh, on computers, uh, perhaps in visualizations or in data. And these ternary retentions as put forward by Stiegler are the most important. And they are necessary because it's through a process of ternary retentions that we become true individuals via what Simon Doe called individuation as part of society and technology over time. And Stiegler's critique is that this digital revolution short circuits this transmission of memories, retentions between generations. So what Stiegler hoped to do is that based on his own uh, advisor, Derrida, turn technology from something that poisons our existence, that short circuits, to something that could restore this relationship between generations, which he believed could be done through integrating humanities and the sciences into what he called digital studies. Um, and this was necessary to prevent even white collar workers like Alan Greenspan uh, of being stripped of their knowledge of becoming proletarian, uh, pro proletarianized. And Stiegler pushed forward a contributor, a contributory economy based on contributions to knowledge, which he believed could preserve rather than destroy difference and even exit the climate crisis, leading what he called the negather Anthropocene, a new epoch where technology takes care of the biosphere rather than destroying it, as negentropy is the growth rather than destruction of difference. Now, how Stiegler wanted to create this new society was via software programs. And so I worked with him on creating collective and decentralized social networks based on Crabgrass, a software from Rise Up, which combined features of wikis with social networking and collective creation of what Stiegler would call ternary retentions. And he also wanted to add dialogue and discourse to, uh, to these kinds of retention. So at his yearly conferences, he used a piece of software made by Samuel Heron called Polemic Tweet. And Polemic Tweet essentially let you ask questions, disagree, agree, and, and otherwise try to structure the kind of horrible unstructured conversations we see currently on, on Twitter. 
And finally, he wanted people to read and understand text and video collectively. And he long de Tomp was his, I think, final and most important work in this regard, a way of annotating collectively uh, digital data, which he believed, again, could help us form and become true individuals. And this is incredibly important at the end because Stiegler believed individuals, again, and this was his favorite uh, diagram, formed through a, a cycle with their software, interactions and feedback, but not to control them, but to harness their inherent power and to give them the ability to restore their dignity of how to live uh, savoir faire and savoir vivre. And this I think is Stiegler's final and, and most important legacy. And I can only say that I, I do hope sincerely you have a time to read his actual works and watch as many excellent uh, video productions. He was a kind and gentle mentor. I came to France looking for help. And he told me, I don't care about your political issues, your problems, for example, terrorism. I care that you, I think you misunderstand Heidegger. And it's important as computer scientists that you understand Heidegger and understand philosophy.